So it's day four on my trip to Kampala and uh, some lovely Irish weather we've got. It's raining today, um, but today I'm uh, visiting the Katanga and Kosovo slums uh, to hear about the work of 92 Hands. And 92 Hands is the charity of the youth movement that was founded by Trinity and the Vixen to uh, support people living in slums like this one. So we've just arrived in, in Katanga and uh, I'm looking forward to meeting some of the people who um, get supported by 92 Hands. And then later on today, I'll be meeting with the leadership team of ERA 92 and 92 Hands and talking about leadership as well. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's going to be a really interesting day. Looking forward to it. And would this be one of the first communities in Kampala? Yeah. I'm good, thanks. I'm Tony. You bring the water. Yeah, well, the, this is the like the weather where I live. <laughs> Yeah? He no called me Mr. Mazunga. <laughs> yeah. So, so many people all living in a very confined space here. And you can see there's open latrines and, um, you know, you can see how difficult life must be for people here. But, you know, there's families, there's kids, there's women, people, uh, you know, going about life, um, little shops. And uh, so it'll be interesting to see the work that 92 Hands does here in terms of the people who really need the most support. So apparently when the rain is very heavy, even he heavier than the rain we're having today, this area can, you know, it, the, the water can rise and it can just flood out into these homes. So you can imagine how hard that is with people trying to clear that up after there's a flood. Hello. Hello, I'm Tony. Yes, I'm Tony. N nice to meet you. <laughs> Justin, lovely to meet you, Justin. So Justin is one of the ladies that are under the Aspen Yes. Uh-huh. She has actually put on his price. Yes. She gets a lot of money. She invested her money in, she does a restaurant in her side. Yes. So she cooks for lunch and supper. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So you're building your business. And is this the little like restaurant, little inside? So this is where you prepare the food. So this is meat, uh -huh. peanuts, sauce. Yes. Is that peanuts? Yes, peanuts. <laughs> Delicious. So this is the food she buys. Mm -hmm. This is the food she buys in the morning. Yes. So around around two, three, the food is ready. Yes. So like customers in the evening, because uh -huh. she always has more customers during dinner time. Yes. Uh -huh. So she serves people. They come around, take away. Some uh -huh. can have a seat here. So she has a small space, but this is where she lives behind the curtains. Okay, and you live. And this is your house as well, yes. your home. At the same time, it's the restaurant. Lovely. Yeah. So, yeah. Food looks delicious. I mean, I've covered all this. Yeah, I've is is It's fine. It's good. Yeah, yeah. And these are your your children? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your little ones? Yes. Hello. Hello. How are you? How are you? Hi, I got a Yeah? Lilian. That's a beautiful name. That's a lovely name. Thank you, Justine, for showing me and inviting me in. And I hope you continue to have a successful business here. And, and I hope the, the children all do really well. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Bye. 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 Bye.
So Justin is a single mother. Yes. With her five children. Yes. So that's what she's trying to, do. you know, you can see she's working hard to prepare and um, so it's, it's so the children can, can go to school. Yes. And they're renting the as well. Yeah. She pays around $60 for rent. Mm -hmm. For sixty dollars a month, a month for, the, for the for the place. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. She couldn't afford to pay for her own home, and then also the business. Right. Space. She just decided to divide it. Have yes. the business at the front. Yes. And then the mm -hmm. home at the back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Helen. Hello, Helen. I'm Tony. Tony. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice, to meet, nice to meet you. How are you, sir? I'm very well, thank you. I'm really interested to see your business, <laughs> all the things you're doing here. Yes, I'm talking about business, your mm. name, your color. Um, so she's called Helen Baleke, and she's she's a mother and also a caretaker of a number of children. They're like 21 yeah. children. 21 children? Yes. Some wow. she picks them from the streets. Yeah. Others are in a way related to her, but they're not her children, uh -huh. like biological children. So she, she she has been with us for quite a number of years. Yes. And she has been with us in the Ask for Women programs. She has started the tailoring class. Uh -huh. And these are some of the machines she was able to buy. Brilliant. So she was also a mother that received the loans from us. That's good. She was able to buy the chickens. The so, rabbits. Chick so you. <laughs> She's so you're sewing machines, so sewing and um, chickens mm -hmm. and little ra rabbits. <laughs> rabbits, yeah, all in one place. And what are the how do you are they rabbits for? What what are the rabbits for? Reading. Yes. For sale. Yeah. Well, what is it for? For for food. For food. Yes. yes. Uh huh. Yes, and same with so, the chickens. Yes. And still in the same place, we have the one child as well. Those who are being sponsored. Yes. Some of them. Some of these. Yes. I just think this is an incredible place. Right in the heart of the Katanga slum. We have this amazing woman, Helen, and uh, she's looking after all these children and developing all these businesses. And it's just a brilliant partnership because 92 Hands is supporting all of this, sponsoring the children to go to school, investing in these, these small businesses to so people can build a life and have an education for these wonderful kids. It's really, uh, it's really inspiring and heartwarming to be here. This is what life is all about. What do you want to become when you grow up? Doctor. You want to become a doctor? Good for you. Good for you. Good for you. You're bright. You work hard, and you can become a doctor one day. So I mean, you wouldn't know when you came around the corner there, and you went down to this building. There was so much hope and life in the middle of, of this uh, of this place where there's so much poverty um, and it's great to see how United Two Hands partners with wonderful women like Helen um, you know and give her support for all that she's doing the 21 kids she looks after my goodness she's a saint she deserves all the support she can get she was our first representative in this community. Yes. We came, we didn't show anyone, but she was very helpful. So now we kept that friendship. And in case we need like, to reach out to people, we tell her to support vulnerable people alongside the chairperson of the community. Yes. So now she knows people that really need help as well, because she has been in this community for a long time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. How did you become a boxer? <laughs> So Larachi na joining a boxi, ga umaichi uche kuli mchu na nari mupi yangu na kadiamu, then mbuka na kuata kuko, kati mbuka mkuu galopo ruwa na kuko, na saga la kumpoa chida na kuba, kati nengo ni champ sabo bimsa we kubanga nzaba kubie orokuwa mbuka tava na kuata kuchege, kati nengo sala kuno ni yangu ni unjaga la mtu ni ambani go kuruani. So no man does that again. Yeah. No man does that again on Helen. 
Good for you. Katiao, when the guy got moved for one, Nandavan, so I want to find out what she has looked. She sat and smiled for a name in the same room. So she would change it out of quality for quick boxing. May I come out of my reason? So you're a great protector of women and girls. Yeah. It does it hasn't stopped raining all day. This is like a wet Monday in Belfast. So Esther is 15 years old. What? She's 15, yeah. 15 years 15. old, mm -hmm. and she just gave birth to the baby. The baby is two weeks old. This baby here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, the... It's okay. It's okay. Let me see. Oh, I didn't see the. Oh. Oh. She's beautiful. She's beautiful. You want to look after her, don't you? I understand. <laughs> so she's two two weeks old. Yeah. So when she was prior to giving birth, she was deserted by her family uh -huh. because uh, and also the the boy's family mm -hmm. deserted her. Like everyone just gave up on her. Mm -hmm. So it's a good Samaritan that gave her the space to stay. Mm -hmm. So she, given that she's young, she's mm -hmm. staying alone. Mm -hmm. she, no one takes care of her. Mm -hmm. Even giving birth to the baby, Helen has told me Sam, Sam helped her. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and then trans donor helped her give birth. Mm -hmm. But now she's on her own. Mm -hmm. Her mother gave up on her. Everyone, even the boy, the father of the child, mm -hmm. gave, gave up on her. And now the Good Samaritan had paid for some time. Now the months are done and she's just like, I cannot help you anymore. So she has to look for a way forward mm -hmm. for her and her baby. And she's young. Yeah. That makes it a bit harder for mm -hmm. her to look after herself. It's been lovely to meet you, Esther, and your beautiful daughter, Amira. <laughs> it's been lovely to meet her too, and I hope, I hope that uh, you'll be able to raise her the way that you want. And, um, and I, I, liked, I liked the ideas you have for your business mm -hmm. and how you can make a living so you can look after her, look after yourself. And I, and I know there, there are good people here who care and want to support you too. So thank you for inviting me into your home and telling, us, telling me your story. This is the reality for a young woman. It's really heartbreaking to see, you know, she really has nothing. And, uh, and yet she wants nothing but the best for her little baby. Um, but I think, I, think there's, I think there's hope here in that now that, you know, Rhoda and uh, Carol have heard the story, they're going to chat to Trinity and see how they can help in whatever way they can. Um, so I think the good thing is that Esther has support from Helen, who's brought you know, brought us here and brought her to your attention, and um, so it's good to know that that love and that support is here. I just hope and pray she gets what you know, what she needs, and that in a few years' time she'll look back and her little girl will be growing up and going to school and she'll be doing well. I've got a new friend. <laughs> well, this has been an unforgettable experience coming to Katanga Slum. Um, I've met some amazing people like Helen, who are just at the heart of this community, helping those who need it most. I'll never forget meeting Esther 
and her little babe, two week old baby Amira and um, the terrible plights and the terrible situations she finds herself in. Um, and uh, But I, I, I know she's going to get support here from 92 Hands as well. Um, and uh, what's a real insight into the incredible work that 92 Hands does. I can't think of any more important work to do in the world, to be honest with you. And also, I've got a new friend. I've met a new friend. <laughs> but I have to go now. I have to say goodbye. Because we're going on to somewhere else now. Okay. Bye-bye. You take care. Okay. <laughs> Bye-bye. We're back now at the Era 92 office and I'm going to talk to Rhoda and Carol to ask a little bit more about how the programmes work and how they support the community and the individuals that we met there. And then um, I'm going to facilitate a leadership workshop with the team here. Um, every organisation like Era 92, they need a good team of leaders to develop and um, grow all of these amazing programs and so it's good that they're going to spend a little bit of time looking at what is leadership and how they become the best leaders they can in this community. So we've just returned from the Katanga slum uh, with Carol and Rhoda here and we're going to chat more about 92 Hands and what the organisation does and the needs that uh, the organisation tries to meet. I suppose the first thing that strikes me is that the, the needs of that community that we just visit mm -hmm. did are huge um, there's, there's you know there's so much need there it's one of the poorest communities I've ever visited um, and you know some of the people we met there their, their stories are heartbreaking in terms of how life is really difficult for them mm -hmm. so what would you say are the main needs that you come across working there um. The main needs in, in Katanga, because we've just visited Katanga, uh, first of all, education. Uh, the kids down there in Katanga do not receive quality education, first of all. And even those who are going to school or have the opportunity to go to school, just go to schools within Katanga that are not really good. And with that the need of education, getting quality education, is the first, the very, very first one I think of. And then, also, the mothers in the communities are single mothers. They don't have husbands or any someone else, a partner or anyone else to help them out. So there are quite a number of needs in the community. We met drug, drug, drug addicts, very different people, mm -hmm. bullies and all that. So there are very many other needs in such communities, it being a slum. I thought it would be really good just to start, to go, could we go round the team and just if you would introduce, I mean I know I've met most of you, but just introduce yourself and your role, but also tell me um, who is, uh, in your opinion, the best leader? I would say Bobby White. Yes. And Trinity. And, and Trinity. Yes. And Trinity. <laughs> I'll go with Mandela. Mandela. Yeah. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to suggest two definitions of a leader. What, the first definition that I like is, is what you call a transformational leader. And that's a leader who really makes a difference. And if you think of those individuals that you talked about, who, who you, you find inspiring leaders, um, they, they've transformed things in some way. So not, someone talked about Obama, for example. You know, he was the first black president of the United States. So he, he was a transformational leader in terms of making, making that, that happen. What is your purpose, first of all? Now your purpose is actually why you are on this earth. You kind of turn up the volume, turn down the volume on your directive or your non-directive, depending on the circumstances or the situation, the person, can be the person, or the urgency. Well, that was good fun. There was lots of energy and conversation and uh, what what's really important in a team coaching session is that the team take the time to step back from the busyness of the everyday work they're doing to talk about how's the team doing, what's the dynamic like, what are the relationships like, how do you deal with conflict, and it was really wonderful today that uh, the team here took 
the opportunity to talk about all of those things and they agreed the way they want to work together in the future. So it was, re that was a really good session and I, I, I liked the fact that people spoke up and said what they, what they think and what they want and I think that will really help the team going forward. So it's been a day of contrast on day four here with Era 92 in Kampala, but, but this morning was really profound in the visit to the slum of Katanga. I suppose I'll never forget that experience. It's one of the poorest places I've ever been in my life. Um, but what stands out for me from there this morning was uh, the young woman, Esther, who, um, is basically destitute with her two week old baby, this beautiful little baby. Um, and she wasn't well and the baby wasn't well and she's very much on her own and really struggling to survive. Um, and I suppose what strikes me about that is in, in every, in all of the poorest communities in the world, um, it's often young women, single mothers who, um, who suffer the most and in this case she was also a refugee from Congo so she was a refugee she was young she was a single mom um, and that's you know that's the most difficult person to be in many parts of the world today and so what was amazing was just to see um, the support that Rhoda and Carol you know offered and I know they're going to continue to come up with a plan to support Esther, uh, to see, you know, in real time, a very needy person coming to their attention and how they responded with compassion and tears uh, to that young woman and how I know they're committed to do what they can to help her, to help her have a better life. Um, I hope and pray that she um, gets through these difficult days and that her, her little girl grows up to go to school and uh, she gets to develop a little business that helps her to fund that and to look after the baby. So, um, yeah, so that, that whole support for women and actually by women in this project is really impressive. You know, both Carl and, and Rhoda are you know, very committed and devoted, strong young women supporting other women in the community. And it's interesting for me, um, sometimes I feel back home that there's a, community organisations can give a lot of lip service and talk a lot about what, what they think women need and what they're going to do for women. What I see here is actual, actually doing it, really committed to doing it, and you're really seeing the impact on women um, and the women who need it the most. So, um, yeah, I probably would say I've never seen a community project that has had such impact on women who need support most than what I'm seeing here in 92 Hands. And um, this afternoon I facilitated a team coaching session with the leaders of the various programmes here. And uh, that was great fun and um, it was an opportunity for me to get to know them a little bit better. And uh, they talked about leadership and how, they were, how they're doing as a team and how they want to get stronger as a team. And I have to say, as a team, I work with many teams on that kind of thing. They were just full of energy and good humor, but they were able to have really important conversations that will help them to get stronger as a team. So that was a, a delight uh, this afternoon. So um, tomorrow is going to be another interesting day. I'll be chatting to Noella at the Era 92 Fund, finding out all about this incredible development of a, a bank that has developed here and is growing remarkably. And then also I'm really looking forward to facilitating a peace building workshop with local young people from Kampala, along with young people who are refugees as well. And uh, using some of the uh, processes that we've used in peace building in Northern Ireland over the years uh, in this context as well. So very excited about meeting those young people tomorrow as well.